Imagine this terrible scenario. You are in your fighter 35,000 feet above the ocean chasing an enemy aircraft. Then finally, after an hour and a half chase, you pull up behind him only to find out that you have no weapon. In this video, we will cover this very story that happened over the Pacific in World War II and how a legendary American pilot would find a way to complete the mission. As we go through this story, if you appreciate the remarkable visuals I have here, then you will love this video's sponsor that I use to make them, War Thunder. It is one of my all-time favorite simulator games, and I'm thrilled to finally be able to tell you guys about them. In case you haven't tried it yet, War Thunder is an incredible online military vehicle combat game. It gives you the chance to drive or pilot all kinds of famous machines into combat. And best of all, it is absolutely free to play and is available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox and is fully cross-platform. It also doesn't require any complex hardware to play. A simple mouse and keyboard works just fine. So as soon as you finish watching this amazing story, join 50 million other players across the world and go try War Thunder today. Play it for free and even add me as a friend. So join me and try the most immersive air, land, and sea combat game around, totally free. Thanks to War Thunder, and without further ado, enjoy. The F-4U Corsair was one of the most successful aircraft of World War II. Its unique design wreaked havoc on Japanese targets in the later parts of the war, specifically in the air. One of these airmen who took part in quite possibly the Corsair's most bizarre mission would be Marine Lieutenant Robert Klingman. Klingman was an Oklahoma native who quickly showed out in the Navy as one of the top young pilots in training. At the conclusion of this training, he opted to join the Marines and was assigned to the legendary Corsair Squadron VMFA-312, more commonly known as the Checkerboards. The battle in which both Bob and the famous Checkerboards would make their mark would be at Okinawa. This was a bloody conflict for a small island in the Pacific that would serve as an airbase for the United States heavy bombers. And while the fighting on the ground was indeed brutal, another horrible part of this engagement for the Allied forces was in the waters surrounding the battleground. Here, where the crucial US fleet was supporting the ground forces, they would face an unprecedented attack by Japanese aircraft. But instead of traditional air attacks, these would be repeated waves of nightmarish kamikazes. These suicide attacks would wreak devastating results on the American forces, killing thousands of sailors and sinking or damaging dozens of ships. This would create the primary role of the F-4U Corsair during this time, to take to the skies and defend the Allies from these lethal attacks. Robert Klingman and other fighters of the 312 participated in these missions in 1945, trying to keep the Japanese aircraft far away from the U.S. naval forces. One such mission that they would take part in would be on May 10th of 1945. U.S. commanders had come to the realization that these kamikaze attacks were actually fairly coordinated. The Japanese had apparently been doing in-depth reconnaissance on the American fleets, and from their aerial images, they were assigning detailed battle plans and specific targets for individual pilots. This allowed the attacks to be more organized and more successful. Thus, the United States commanders realized that if they could prevent these recon missions, they would decrease the success of the kamikazes. So, on May 10th, Klingman and three other Corsairs were sent to go and take out a recon plane that had been sighted taken to the air that afternoon. This would likely be a Ki-45 Nick twin-engine aircraft. Now, there would be one major problem with this assignment. This was no normal Japanese heavy fighter. This aircraft was specifically outfitted for the high-level recon role. The Ki-45 had been upgraded and souped up to fly as high as possible, well over 35,000 feet of altitude. This allowed it to fly completely out of the range of any American anti-aircraft guns. Additionally, it also allowed them to consistently fly above the ceiling of most Allied fighters. This made these recon aircraft extremely difficult targets for the Allies. But nonetheless, Robert Klingman and the checkerboards would have to find a way to take it out. 
As they made their way up, the lone Nick was confirmed to be at 36,000 feet, above the American ships. Once the four Corsairs made it up to 20,000 feet, the air began to get cold and thin. They had to do anything possible to try and continue to gain height to get near the Japanese aircraft. So their flight leader, Captain Ken Rooser, ordered the men to fire off some of their 50 caliber ammunition to try and reduce weight. Each pilot fired off around 2,000 rounds, lightening their Corsairs by nearly 700 pounds each. Shortly after this, at around 30,000 feet, two of the Corsairs experienced engine trouble due to the high altitude and had to turn away, heading back towards the fleet below. The pair of remaining Corsairs continued upward on wartime emergency power, pushing their engines to the absolute limits of their ability. Around this time, as they approached 38,000 feet, the American pilots were slowly gaining on the Ki-45, but feared that they would not be able to get much closer. Captain Rooser used most of his remaining ammunition to fire a desperation shot from a distance, spooking the Nick and causing it to increase throttle. Lieutenant Robert Klingman now had one final shot. He currently had a speed advantage over the Ki-45, but it would not last long. His Corsair was low on fuel and could not survive this level of throttle power for much longer. He came up close behind the Japanese plane, making sure that he would not miss his shot. The twin-engine aircraft entered his crosshairs and he pulled the trigger. But as he expected to hear his 50 caliber guns fire to life, there was instead utter silence. The incredibly low temperature of the high altitude had caused the lubrication on his guns to thicken, rendering his weapons completely inoperable. After beating his own gun with his hands, the Japanese gunner let out a burst from his own weapon right at Klingman's Corsair, which left bullet holes in his wing. But luckily, his guns quickly jammed as well. Klingman was now right above an enemy plane that was a crucial objective with no weapon to take it out. He had been attempting to catch the Ki-45 for over an hour and a half and likely lacked the fuel to make it all the way back home. And so, in the mind of the bold young pilot, there was but one thing left to do. Robert Klingman radioed to his wingman, I'm going to hit him with my plane. He immediately followed through, pointing his nose downward, right at the recon aircraft. The propeller of his Corsair struck the fuselage and tail section of the Ki-45 multiple times in just a few seconds. The gunner and his gun were reportedly thrown out of the plane in the initial impact, and then in the next instant his propeller tore into the supporting area of the tail section, sawing it completely off. The impact quickly put both planes into an uncontrolled spin, hurtling them back to earth. Klingman had accomplished his goal, but was now in quite a predicament himself. His Corsair was shaking violently, so much so that he could not even read his instrument panel. To his relief, however, after falling thousands of feet, he was eventually able to regain control of the fighter. He found a way to control the shaking and was able to glide his Corsair down to a lower altitude. With the aid of his wingmen, they were able to set a course for a nearby American airfield. At around 10,000 feet of altitude, he was completely out of fuel and his propeller was totally inoperable from the damage sustained in the collision. Captain Rooser suggested that he bail out, but Klingman insisted on bringing his F-4U in for a normal landing. Miraculously, the Corsair made it to the American airfield and came in safely on the runway. Klingman and his warbird bounced along the ground and came to a stop where, upon exiting his plane, he was quoted as famously saying, it's a hell of a way to earn a buck. Coincidentally, just a few days later, Robert Klingman would actually have to bail out after combat. His plane sustained damage to its landing gear, causing it to be unsafe to land. After he jumped from his Corsair, however, and was safely in his parachute, his fighter continued to glide, right at the nearby American fleet. The young American hero received quite a bit of jokes after his pilotless plane drifted dangerously close to his own ships and actually had to be shot down by the U.S. fleet. 
Robert Klingman would go on to survive the war, serve in Korea, and pass away in 2004 at the age of 87. Quick reminder for you guys, don't forget to try War Thunder today. Use the link below to go to battle in over 2,000 beautiful military vehicles, dogfight over tons of maps in realistic and immersive air combat, and even add me as a friend and I'll see you in the skies. Thanks for watching, please consider subscribing.